Hi everybody. Today I thought we'd have a look at a DC to DC converter. The one I'm going to look at today seems to be a relatively new one to the market uh, using the brand name DROK, D-R-O-K. Uh, this particular module, quite small, and uh, it has the advantage of having an onboard uh, digital uh, voltmeter which can measure both the input and the output voltages. So let's have a closer look at this unit and then let's check it through its specification. Here we can see a closer look at the module. Uh, the size of the module itself is uh, 65 uh, millimeters by 35 millimeters. Um, the main components regarding the DC to DC converter are along the top here. So we have the input capacitor there, electrolytic and the output capacitor. There we have the uh, DC to DC converter chip. It's actually the XL Semi chip XL2596 which is a, a fixed frequency um, pulse width modulation book DC to DC converter IC. So they're the main components. Input voltage going in there, output voltage there. Uh, the IC itself is capable of giving a voltage range from between 1.23 volts all the way up to 37 volts at a maximum current of 3 amps but as you can see here we have no heat sink on the IC and therefore its capability is restricted to around 2 amps but we'll have a look at that in more detail when we uh, hook the unit up all the other components on the module are to do with either controlling the output voltage from the DC to DC converter IC or controlling the digital display you see there to give either the input or the output voltage. There are four tactile push switches. Um, the two on this side here labelled I and O uh, the I button, uh, pressing that displays the input voltage and pressing the O button, the output, displays the output voltage. The other two tactile buttons here, labelled plus and minus, are used to set the output voltage. So let's have a look at the other components on the module. Um, and to do that fully, I think we're going to have to remove the LED display there because I'm sure that there is some components beneath that display. So let me do that first of all and then we'll come back and have a closer look at the other components on the board. Right well I've now removed the LED display module and you can clearly see that underneath that display there's a number of uh, components particularly the IC and the IC itself is the heart of the control and the driver circuitry for the display. Uh, it is in fact uh, an 8-bit microchip uh, made by SD Microelectronics. Uh, this particular type is quite common for these driving these small 3 or 4 digit uh, volt or uh, ammeter displays that you find. Uh, the IC itself is the STM 8S003F3 strange number. Um, now the other components on the board we can see here there is a 5 volt regulator IC uh, they're using a low drop low noise 5 volt regulator IC this particular 5 volt regulator there is the Torix IC uh, XC6203 now that's giving a 5 volt output but then they're immediately following that with a another shunt regulator chip there, a three pinned one you can see uh, and that is the 431 IC and that is an adjustable shunt regulator they're adjusting the output voltage by use of a couple of uh, resistors and then that's giving 3.3 volts output for the micro computer IC there so what we have is the input voltage coming in going through a 5 volt regulator that's feeding then a shunt regulator dropping it down to 3.3 volts 
Now obviously if that's been used to drive the microcomputer and the display then any input voltage going in here lower than 5 volts is a little bit of an issue. But uh, let's discuss that a little bit later. The other IC on the module here is an LM358 which is a dual op amp and it appears that that's been used to provide the uh, feedback voltage to the DC to DC book converter IC there to adjust the output voltage and that itself is probably controlled by the microcomputer chip. Now another um, interesting point is on the output of the module they appear to have two uh, what appears to be 10k resistors in parallel there, you see one there and one there and that's connected straight across the output terminals um, probably to give some sort of stability I would think. Just next to the micro computer I see there you can see there is a small what appears to be either a transistor or a, a, an FET uh, and that's probably been used to control the shutdown uh, signal for the DC DC converter chip. So I think what we'll do next is uh, we'll try and uh, work out the uh, the circuit for this and draw the uh, schematic as best I can on the whiteboard. Well I've managed to work out the schematic for this uh, DROC DC to DC step down converter module so let's have a closer look. The main part of the circuit is obviously the XL2596 which is the DC to DC book converter IC and four external components and they are the Shockey diode the 33 micro Henry inductor and the uh, 330 um, input and output electrolytic capacitors and it's these four components and the IC that perform the main function of the DC to DC converter module. The remainder of the circuit we see here is all about controlling that output voltage so we can vary it from around 1.25 volts all the way through to 37 volts and display that output voltage on a three digit LED seven segment display. Now that's achieved by a small 8 bit microchip by ST Microelectronics and this particular IC, the STM8S003F3 is commonly used in a lot of little modules you see on eBay these days which uh, provide a small meter or a, either a voltage or a current meter so it's quite a popular chip this and they're extremely cheap around 50, 50 pence. In this case they're using this IC not only to display the voltage on the LED display but they're also using it to provide a reference signal to control the output voltage of the DC to DC converter. Now the output voltage is controlled by utilizing a pulse width modulated signal from the IC, that's a square wave where we're changing the pulse mark space ratio and feeding that square wave signal through uh, a CR integrator and an op amp feeding that then onto a, a second operational amplifier here and comparing it with a sample of the output voltage you see there there's a potential divider across the output voltage so we take a proportion of the output voltage we take the reference voltage signal we've generated from the micro computer chip and that generates an output voltage which is fed to pin 4 which is the feedback pin on the XL2596 which effectively controls the output voltage. Once you've set the output voltage that feedback loop maintains that voltage level so it is quite stable once you've set the voltage. The output signal coming from pin 1 as I say is a square wave signal and the pulse width of that signal is determined by 
two tactile switches here, one labelled minus, one labelled plus, for increasing or decreasing the output voltage. Um, if you were to press the negative and reduce the output voltage, and you were to have a look at the signal coming out on pin one of the microchip there, you would see a square wave signal where the pulse width may look something like that. So as you go down in voltage, you get narrow pulses. If you go up in voltage, you find your pulse width increases. So maybe we can have a look at that on the oscilloscope later, just to see that that's working correctly. Um, so that's how we control the output voltage of this uh, voltage regulator IC by the microchip and uh, a couple of op amps and uh, potential divider. You'll also notice that you have two other tactile buttons there labelled in and out and they determine whether the digital display here displays the input voltage or the output voltage. Now to display that voltage the uh, microchip takes a sample of the input voltage as you see here you have a potential divider of 30k and a 300 ohm it's taking a small sample of the input voltage and feeding it in onto pin 3 which is an analog input pin of the microchip. It also has a similar potential divider on the output again a 30k and a 300 ohm and it's feeding that sample signal onto pin 2 of the microchip yet another analog input. So you've got two inputs there being used, one to monitor the input voltage and one to monitor the output voltage. Which of those is used is determined by these tactile buttons here, which one you press either in or out. So pressing in will tell the microchip to use the voltage from this divider here and pressing out will tell the micro to use the voltage from the output divider. The voltage is then used by the microchip and converted to give a digital readout of that voltage on the LED display there. Now this particular microchip requires 3.3 volts to operate and that is achieved by taking the input voltage here and feeding it down through a low drop 5 volt regulator IC which is an XC6203 and the output of that is used to feed 5 volts to the operational amplifier. Uh, it then also feeds a programmable shunt regulator which is a TL431 and that's programmed to deliver 3.3 volts to the microchip by selecting the correct potential divider resistors here. In this case it's a 680 ohm and a 300 ohm resistor and that's fed to the control pin on the TL431 and that ensures that the shunt regulation there is around 3.3 volts. Now one of the points I should mention is that if for any reason the input voltage to the DC to DC voltage regulator IC were to fall to a low level around 3 or 4 volts or less then clearly you can see that the microchip and the LED display would stop functioning. And the reason obviously for that is that you would have insufficient voltage feeding the 5 volt regulator chip and therefore you'd start losing the 3.3 volt supply going to the micro. So one little nice feature that they've added to this uh, converter, this DC to DC converter, is to shut down the DC to DC converter IC itself under those conditions because if you can't see anything on the display then really you need to shut down the output because you're not sure what's coming out. Now they're utilising pin 5 of the DC to DC converter IC for this which is an on off pin and normally pin 5 is grounded which means that the IC is working correctly. If you take pin 5 high it switches off the book converter chip and remove the output. Now under normal conditions when the little microchip here is working correctly you get a voltage coming out of pin 19 which is biasing on uh, an NPN transistor and that effectively is grounding pin 5 which means that the 
DC to DC converter chip is working correctly and giving an output. If for any reason the microchip stops functioning correctly, the output from pin 19 would disappear and go to zero. As soon as that voltage disappears, the transistor there turns off, and when it turns off, there's a positive voltage fed to pin 5, which switches off the DC to DC converter IC. And uh, just an example, if we say I had 3 volts going in, then you've got an equal potential divider there, you'd have about 1.5 volts going to pin 5, shutting down the DC to DC converter. So it's a nice little touch that they've added to this, this module. Now just one final point on this, uh, the microchip itself is reset at switch on and that's achieved by a voltage supply to pin 4, the reset pin. So that's taken high and when that pin goes high at switch on it resets the micro. Right, well what we'll do now is we'll connect the module up and test its operation and just see how well it works. Right, well I've now connected the module to the power supply. Uh, I currently have the power supply set to 30 volts DC and I'm feeding that on the input of the module. And with no load on the output it's currently drawing around 40 milliamps. Now to monitor the accuracy of the meter I've also connected my Fluke digital multimeter here to the output and we're monitoring the same voltage and you can see there that the Fluke is reading 5.17 of a volt and the digital uh, meter on the module is reading 5.0 volts so it's just about within its uh, tolerance of specification uh, the specification of this unit suggests that the digital meter on the module here is accurate to within 0.1 of a volt so it's, it's not too bad now I've also put a temperature uh, sensor on the DC to DC converter IC there to monitor the temperature and at the moment we have no load on the unit and uh, it's recording a temperature of around 35 degrees centigrade. The oscilloscope I've connected to pin 1 of the little microchip so we can monitor the pulse with modulated signal coming out which will control the output voltage and what you see on the oscilloscope at the moment is the square wave signal with the pulse width there you see the narrow pulses and this is with it set to 5 volts uh, you'll see later that as we increase the um, the voltage on the module that pulse width will also increase and the frequency of that is around 10 kilohertz Now finally I have a DC load connected to the output. At the moment I have the load switched off but that is, the load is also monitoring the output voltage and the, uh, that's read, giving a reading of 5.15 of a volt. Now by default it would appear that the module comes on with the output voltage being displayed on the LED display. Now if I press the far left button you should see the display now change to read the input voltage so let me just do that so I've pressed the the button at the left there and the reading is now reading the input voltage it's giving a reading of 29.8 volts now I just want to test one thing um, if I were to remove the DC power to the unit and then restore the power would it remember that setting that I'm looking at the input voltage or would it revert back to the output voltage. So let's just uh, test that by removing the DC power from the unit and then returning the power. No, it, it defaults to the output voltage so whenever the power is restored to the unit it uh, returns to give the output voltage. The other two buttons you can see here on the right are to adjust the output voltage either up or down and you can see under the buttons there the one next to the display has got a positive symbol and the one on the far right is negative so that's up and down in voltage so if I were to press the plus button 
we'll now see how the voltage increases and on one point I will, I'll make here that there's two modes on pressing these buttons if you have a long press on the button it changes a volt at a time and a, a short quick press changes 0.1 volt at a time so you can trim the voltage reading which is quite a nice touch so if I hold the button down and uh, you'll see it step through a volt at a time if I keep it held down so let's take it up to say 12 volts look at the oscilloscope as well and I'll let go at 12 volts and there's actually a little bit of a delay before it changes to the new output voltage uh, it's now reading at 12.1 volts and you can see here on the oscilloscope that the pulse width of that signal there the square wave we've increased the pulse there uh, indicating that we've increased the voltage being fed to the DC to DC converter chip to increase the output voltage again looking at the meter reading we've got 12.1 volts and on the fluke here we've got 12.2 so again it's within specification if I were to quickly press the plus button you can see how I'm adjusting the voltage at 0.1 of a volt at a time to 13 and then once you've set the voltage there's a little bit of a delay before it then switches to the new voltage so basically what's happening here is that the microchip is taking the new voltage input that you're setting and then only supplying that signal to the DC to DC converter IC when you've finally finished uh, setting your voltage which is a, another nice feature of the unit if I press the negative button then we can hold that down, long holds down, it'll turn down, take it back down to say 4 volts and again you can see the pulse width has now reduced well now let's set the unit back to 5 volts and this time what I'm going to do is now put a load on the output so I'm going to set the uh, digital load here to initially 1 amp so let's uh, set the load to 1 amp and let's just see what happens when I switch the load on so we want to monitor the voltage and also the change in the input current on the power supply there the, it's currently showing 38 milliamps, 0 0.038 of an amp and uh, we want to see whether adding a load on the output whether it affects the output voltage so we've got 5 volts on the module and the fluke is showing 5.12 also the uh, digital load is showing 5.1 as well so let's switch the load on at 1 amp and also monitor the temperature it's currently 37 degrees centigrade so I'm switching the load on Now you'll see here it's quite interesting we have the load switched on uh, we're drawing exactly one amp uh, that's five watts in power and the voltage has remained stable it's very good the input current has obviously increased now and it's uh, 0.253 of an amp 253 milliamps you can also see what's happening here on the oscilloscope you can see there's some movement there on the uh, signal on the square wave signal and that's because the feedback loop is constantly updating and making sure that the output voltage remains stable I'll just try and trigger it to stabilize that a little bit better and if you look closely on the uh, square wave pulses there you'll actually see some high frequency switching pulses on the square wave very very small the square wave output signal there is uh, peak to peak is uh, 3 volts right okay now let's increase the load to say 2 amps so I'll switch the load off and this time let's change it to 
2 amps and we'll switch the load back on again and at 2 amps now you can see the output voltage has remained constant at 5 volts on the fluke it's showing 5.1 uh, and we're drawing 9.9 .9 watts of power at the moment now again if you look at the uh, switching signal on the oscilloscope there you can see that we the, the actual switching noise has increased slightly but it is very very small now if we also look at the temperature of the DC DC converter IC chip there uh, you can see the temperature is increasing now it's up at, currently up at 58 degrees centigrade approaching 60 degrees so that's, that's within its uh, capabilities at the moment at 2 amps now if you were to go up higher than 2 amps you clearly would need a heat sink on that uh, IC to keep it cool. Right, well, now let me switch the load off. And what I want to do now is increase the output voltage to say 10 volts and still keep the 2 amps load and just see what happens. So let's uh, step up the uh, voltage up to 10 volts. There we are, it's 10 volts now. So the meter there is reading 10 volts, the fluke is reading 10.1. No load again at the moment, so we're on a 40 milliamps input current. Now let's uh, switch the load on. The input current has now increased to 0.83 of an amp, 830 milliamps, but uh, the output voltage is remain constant at 10 volts. So 10 volts on the display on the module and 10.1 on the on the fluke. We're now drawing 20 watts of power. Let's just test it now at uh, 20 volts. So let me just uh, remove the load and uh, let's increase the output voltage now to 20 volts. There we are. So it's now settled at 20. Again, you can clearly see on the max space ratio there, uh, you've got a much wider pulse now. It's, it's nearly a 50 50 split between the plus and minus pulses. So let's now, uh, the input current, by the way, just slightly increased to 43 milliamps. Let's now switch the load on again, the 2 amp load, and see what happens. So the 2 amp load is on, uh, and the output is still constant at 20 volts, and the fluke is showing 20.1. So I'm quite happy with that. The input current obviously has increased now, so the input current has increased to 1.5 amps. But the module is handling this quite nicely, and uh, again, if we look at the temperature of the uh, this DC converter, you can see that's obviously going up now. I think round about this sort of current level, uh, it may be advisable to put a little heat sink on the uh, DC to DC book converter IC. Okay, let's switch off the load. And what I'm going to do now is uh, take it up to uh, 25 volts. So we have the output now set to 25 volts. Again, you can see the effect on the pulse width there. And let's switch on the 2 amp load again and uh, monitor the output. So we're now going 2 amps. The output voltage is remaining constant. So 25 volts there. The fluke is showing 25.1. And the input current is now shot up to 1.85 of an amp. And the temperature on the chip is now run increasing at so it's now 80 81 degrees C so let's remove the load so I think <coughs> at those sort of uh, voltages and, and currents 
uh, it may be advisable to uh, have a little heat sink as I say on the uh, on the chip itself but the module is working nicely and it's certainly maintaining the output voltage constant at whatever you set it at so I'm quite happy with that right well I've now set the module for a 10 volt output uh, and I have no load on at the moment and what I want to do now is look at the effect of uh, low input voltage to the module. Remember what we said when we looked at the circuit diagram? We said that there's a low voltage shutdown circuit on this module that when the input voltage gets to around 3 or 4 volts then the unit shuts down. So let's just test that out. So what I'm going to do now is reduce the input voltage and just see when the module turns off. at 3 volts. Right, at 3 volts there the unit appears to have switched off, the display is not working uh, you can see on the oscilloscope we've got no pulse coming out to control the output voltage of the DC DC converter IC uh, and because the display is off we can't see any reading on the output but the fluke is showing that we do in fact have a reading of 1 volt coming out. So that's at 3 volts. So if I increase that voltage now 4 volts the unit starts to come back on again but at 4 volts uh, the voltage coming out is clearly low so go to 5 volts on the input again the, the output voltage is not, still not correct go to uh, 6 volts Right, well I've now increased the uh, input voltage to the module up to 11 volts and uh, the display is showing that we're getting a correct reading of 10 volts coming out but there's no headroom there really uh, we've only got one volt difference between the input and the output voltage so I would imagine as soon as I put any load on this uh, the output voltage is going to drop so let me just put uh, a 2 amp load on the and at 2 amp you can see that uh, at 11 volts input the output voltage has dropped down to 9.5 volts so that's the headroom really so if we were to simply take the input voltage say up to 12 volts there we are so the input voltage needs to be 2 volts higher than your desired output voltage to give you enough headroom to manage the load on the output right well finally I've uh, set my dual power supply here uh, to give us 40 volts output so I've uh, connected the two power supplies here in series 20 volts on each so we've got 40 volts coming from the power supply now feeding the module so let's just test it at its maximum input voltage of 40 volts and uh, let's just see what the uh, digital display reading says about the input voltage and that's reading it at 39.8 volts so back to the output voltage so we have a output voltage set at 10 volts we have 40 volts going in and uh, if I now switch on the 2 amp load you can see there that we're maintaining the output voltage quite nicely the fluke is reading 10.1 again it's, it's within its tolerance and the temperature on the DC DC converter chip is rising now to going up to 37 and, and keep and rising to 38 and up, to, up to 40 or so degrees centigrade so it's working quite nicely well we've got the the module still connected uh, I'm just going to check the output ripple on the module. Uh, the module is set at the moment for 5 volts output and I've moved the oscilloscope lead to the output terminal and we're going to monitor there the output ripple. Now all DC to DC converters will display some output ripple and that is due to the uh, charging and discharging of the output capacitor 
with each pulse of the internal oscillator and the internal oscillator of this DC to DC chip is a hundred, fixed 150 kilohertz so we should see something around 150 kilohertz um, ripple on the output but it should be fairly small and uh, the specification suggests that uh, that is around 100 millivolts so let's have a look at the output ripple so with no load on the output we're virtually getting no output ripple coming out there uh, let me switch on, let me set the load to 1 amp and uh, set the load and now you can see that uh, I've put a load of 1 amp on the output and you can clearly now see we've got some ripple coming out so let me just see if I can freeze that and examine that more closely there you are so the sawtooth ripple there you can see is actually the uh, ripple caused by the charging and discharging of the output capacitor and uh, the peak to peak to that uh, ripple is around 100 millivolts so it's within its specification now on top of that you can see some high frequency spikes this is also quite common with uh, DC to DC converters and uh, those spikes are obviously at a much higher frequency in the mega megahertz range so the ripple on this is certainly within its specification and uh, no different to a lot of other DC to DC converters let me just increase the output current to 2 amps let me just uh, set that again uh, increase the output current to 2 amps the load on and at 2 amps there let me just freeze that at 2 amps you can see that the ripple has remained around 100 millivolts uh, the only thing that's changed slightly is the high frequency spikes which are the DC switching spikes have got a little bit larger. Now I would, I would imagine that uh, some of these spikes and that could be filtered out by additional filtering on the output here if you wished. But it's certainly well within its specification. The suppliers of this module have their own website uh, at www.droiking.com that's d-r-o-k-i-n-g.com the brand name that they're using is DROC and there you can see the uh, voltage regulator DC to DC voltage regulator now what, a, what they appear to do is they do a lot of their sales through Amazon store and you can find this module available on the Amazon store for uh, £6.72 now you'll also find the module available on eBay and uh, just give you a indication there uh, there's a supplier on eBay offering the same module this module comes with a small uh, instruction sheet uh, fairly limited really but I will point out there is two things on here which don't really apply to this module they mention here that uh, the module has two LED indicators a red and a green one well they're not on this module uh, they're on a previous module that didn't have the digital display so they're not included and they also mention the option here of removing a link called P3 to switch off the digital display and that's not on this module either so there's a few errors there in terms of the uh, descriptions on the module in uh, in terms of what's there but the rest of it is fine uh, the specification there is correct and that uh, was correct in terms of what I found in practice well I hope you found this uh, video on this DROC DC to DC step down converter of interest it's a nice little module does exactly what it says the lives up to its specification and uh, reasonably priced. 
So this is something that I may use on some uh, later projects I, uh, I work on. So if you found this of interest, please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you all again next time. Bye for now.